Welcome to the machine 2.7.1 update. I'm going to be your host Fontaine. All right. So I got a lot of questions, an overwhelming amount of emails in regards to how to get the audio to sequence correctly using the audio plugin. So I think some people weren't really understanding the concept on it. Um, just so everyone's clear and gets a good understanding of this, the audio plugin is used for uh, synchronizing playback of your audio. Basically, what happens is it synchronizes that audio in a loop or a pattern, whatever you want to call it, and it applies the uh, the time stretching in real time to ensure that the loop plays in sync with your project's uh, beats per minutes. So even if you change the project tempo while playing it, it will speed it up and slow it down. So it does stress the audio. Each audio plugin can play uh, just one loop at a time. You can't put like multiple layered uh, samples on one sound. It doesn't work that way. Um, but you can have multiple audio plugins um, on each sound and you can layer uh, your loops. So what I'm going to do uh, for an example in this video is I'm going to stack and layer some audio. And then I'm going to show you how you can sequence it because another question I was getting uh, that was driving someone crazy was um, how do I trigger my audio from the second bar, third bar, fourth bar? Because it was... Uh, looping uh i think one bar over and over i think i think that's what it said that that's basically what it does so i'm going to show you how to get it to sequence correctly because i think that's where some people are getting confused on the sequencing it goes a loop and just so you get an understanding in the field of melody i'm just going to trigger some of these sounds like really really quick so i, I don't want to go too long in this video i'm going to you know make sure you understand it's like really really quick so okay i got a drum pattern You know, that's basically each each uh, drum loop is a bar. I have everything on here a bar. Okay, so whether it's the bass. I got the bass and I have like. You know, some different chords there and. You know, some other chords there, but if you notice. On that one, like, for example, see how this is kind of tricky. It's it starts kind of late because that's why I have it looped. And depending on how you have your uh, samples looped is how it's going to play back. Because remember, there is a loop icon where you can loop things perfectly. But, you know, this is just a different technique, a different workflow. I like to keep mine the way I originally had it, because the way I have this on the pads for when I'm doing a live performance, I have it set a specific way. So it's going to be different for everybody. All right, so I'm just going to show you uh, the way I have this set up. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to convert all these into audio tracks. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to exit the sample screen. Here's the MIDI notes. Okay, I already have the pattern laid out already because it's just going to make it quicker for the video. And that's the way I'm going to sequence it. Okay, so what I'm going to do for each sound, I'm going to uh, make them to audio. Oh, also to... um. The reason why I'm not using the uh, MK3 controller hooked up, I know someone's going to be like, why do you got the controller hooked up? That's the point of a whole tutorial. Because the software, this is going to make it a lot easier to see what's going on and a lot easier to understand when you're doing this way. Get it down this way first, then we'll move on to the MK3. Trust me, this, trust me, believe what I say when I tell you, this is the better way to learn this because it's on a screen and you're going to get it like that. And once you learn it here, an MK3 is going to be a snap. So let me just go through these sounds really quick and uh, let's go ahead and convert these to audio plugins right quick. And that's the cool thing about this. You see how fast it's just, it's touch, click, click, touch, click, click, touch, click, click, touch, click, click. Very quick, very easy. In case someone's like, oh, it's going to take too long. Nah, it's not going to take long at all. I guarantee you I'll be done with this in about two minutes. Now, some wave files um for example these uh they're hard to see so if you get wave files like these these are kind of tricky to work with um i don't know it was something where i recorded that uh i don't know i'm gonna have to dive into that and find out what's going on with that but 
the rest of them looking pretty good. Okay, so now this is looping. Okay, so there's a difference. There's a difference between loop and gate. Loop is going to loop the audio. So if this is one bar, uh, constantly repeating itself, you're going to get a hodgepodge, uh, mess. You know, it's not going to sound right. <laughs> I think that's what's confusing you. You got to use gate. Okay, the purpose of the gate is it's like a like a real life gate. It's gonna let audio in. It's gonna let audio out. Like if you're like if you're at a gate to your house, you open the gate. The gate lets you in. You close the gate. It keeps people out. That's the point of a gate. All right. So every one of these you're gonna have to put on gate. Okay, like this. So now this is the point where okay now this is gonna take. A little bit longer because I'm doing it with the mouse because I want to make sure that people understand this and that's why I'm doing it like this I can fly through it on mk3 but what would be the point because you're not gonna know what's going on you're gonna be like yo you just blew right by that and I don't understand it I'm gonna do this repetition is the key <laughs> because this is gonna help you understand beyond a shadow of a doubt I know for a fact by the time you guys are done watching this video there's no way somebody's not going to understand how this, this feature is working all right now there's the gates on that see the gates now i'm using 64 triplets notes okay and i think i'm using 16 here yeah 16 on the on the other guy here why because okay when i'm on a sound like this when i'm touching on the uh the little guy here again you can't be on loop like this no you got to be on gate so when you want to adjust your audio start endpoint let me zoom in on this a little bit so you can see those endpoints. Here's your starting endpoints. See that? So you can get in there and, you know, if you wanted to make it shorter, longer, if you wanted your gate to come in, you know, whatever you wanted to do. This is just basically the way that I got mine set up. You see, it, it turns to like the little, the little icon where you can, you know, move things around. Okay. So that's where I have mine arranged. Now, 82 beats per minute. Uh, let me see what's the best way I explain this to make this really easy to understand. Um, I use the first, I used, okay, the, well, everybody's workflow is different. I use the first sound, uh, pattern is basically kind of like a reference because it just makes it easier to understand what's going on when it comes to rest, the rest of the sounds in your loop, depending on how you got it. Cause everything that's grayed out here, you can match up these different gates with what's in this gray part here, you know, cause if, okay, like for example, let's say if you're in there and something's off or something like that, for whatever reason, I don't know. I'm just speaking hypothetically cause I, I, you know, I just don't know what's going to be going on in your loop, but here's your tempo right here. So if you hold shift on the keyboard or shift on the MK three and adjust the beats per minutes, you can move this audio. You see what I'm saying? So if, if you need to line it up, to make it more on time or if, it, or if it's lagging behind whatever the case may be see it's just completely moving i'm just gonna do this a couple of times so people can you know understand that so that's, that's basically how you can get things on time if it's off and again these gates these sections is what's going to determine um how it's going to sequence because when you're over here, yeah, you can pitch notes up and down for whatever reason. You know, you can affect these, uh, you know, these like little sections up in here. Pitch it, make them longer, shorter, whatever the case may be, you know, move it up, move it down, you know, whatever the case may be. But again, that's up to you. Whatever pitch you wanted at, that's what the piano rolls for. Again, to hear your audio in real time, it has to be playing. All right. So. When I go through these like this, let me shrink this down so it's easier to see. Hold on. Sorry if I'm rushing. I'm just really trying to get this in really quick because I'm trying to cover a lot in this like little section here. All right, so as you can see right there, that's the drum loop, all in the same key. Chord, I mean uh, bass, all in the same key, and there's the notes where you can pitch them, chords, which now okay I can see them a lot better now. I'm zooming on that. This is that one that looked like a little line. But 
it's it's a lot easier to see now. Okay, and here goes the other chords, the other chords and melodies and stuff like that. All right, so that's where you can pinch them at. I mean, I uh, pitch them, and, and I have other videos on that, so you guys can take a look at that. Let me go back to the arranger. So that works great for you know live performances and stuff like that. So when you really want to get serious and say, okay, well, I really want to make my track, let's try doing this a little more serious. We could be like. Basically, from this point, you just sequence in. You understand what I'm saying? So from that point, you're just basically sequencing. Now, I'm going to hold it right here because I can go on forever and ever from this point. I really don't want to run too long. You know, just rewind the video a couple of times. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. And again, you can come in here, you know, in uh, pitch note, or rather pitch shift your samples and things of that nature. So, yeah, man, that's pretty much it, man. You know, I, I kind of ran through it kind of quick. But I hope that, you know, it's making good sense in the video and, you know, you understand uh, what's going on. So, uh, yeah, man, we'll pretty much hold it up right there. This is your boy Fontaine, www.vipsoundlab.com. Be sure to come by, sign up as a member today. We do uh, machine tutorials. We give away free monthly drum kits, free session files, free templates, one-on-one uh, -on -one support if you need me. You know, as long as you're, you know, you're a paid member, we have a membership as low as $9.99, all the way up to a platinum membership. You know, it's up to you. We have uh, flash drives with all of our drum kits and expansions on the website. We have one terabyte portable hard drives, you know, because backing up files is important. Things of that nature, I mean, and that's the cool thing about the VIP Sound Lab. I mean, you know, we don't charge monthly fees. We keep things affordable and you have the one-on-one -on -one support from me. You know, if you want to email me, you know, if you're stuck on something, I'm here to help. You know, that, that's that's what I'm here for. You know, I'm, I love to spread knowledge. I love to learn. You know, I'm not saying I'm the, the guru of everything because, you know, I'm still learning things every day myself. But I think it's dope, you know, when we can come together as a community and share knowledge. So, yeah, man, that's pretty much it. And I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.